if you can. Did you? Oh, if you did not, and I saw you shaking your head, sir, then don't worry. Don't worry, because now is your chance. My name is Vincent Crummies, and along with my uh, touring theatre company, I've taken some of Mr. Dickens' more vivid characters and given them a twist for your delight and delectation. Yes, there is to be a trial, ladies and gentlemen. The trial of the century. Yes, yes, yes. I will be the judge. Yes, my name will be Mr. Fenn. I roll up and really get my teeth in. So. Yes, all right. This lot of my actors, and they will bring forth some of Mr. Dickens' characters from his world for your delight and delectation. And you will have to be the judge. Right, we bring to you Miss Havisham and our training heartbreakers. Yeah. We bring to you the pickpockets from Fagin's Gang. We bring to you the rebellious inmates from the workhouse. And last but no means least, we bring to you the social climbers from the Victorian age of snobbery, the stuck-up veneerings. But first, for your entertainment and enlightenment, we bring to you the coming of age, the children who both feared and loved. The railway, ladies and gentlemen. The coming of age of the railway is to be on trial. Yes, the railway, love it or hate it, and it is depicted in Charles Dickens' famous work, Dombey and Sons. Yes. And the Charles Dickens, of course, lived in Chatham, and his house looked over a hayfield in Ordnance Street, and he had a view of the River Medway. But the railway was to change that view, and, all, and the lives of us all. So, listen to his words and decide for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, 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 welcome indeed to this most modern of worlds, replete with the modern marvels of science where humanity has indeed harnessed the power of nature and through ingenuity, tenaciousness and perspicacity has indeed brought us the greatest symbol of our age. <laughs> Through the hollow, on the heights, by the heat, by the orchard, where the sheep are feeding, where the factory is smoking, where the great cathedral rides, where the bleak moor lies. Away with the shriek and the roar and the rattle! Do you expect this triumphant age to arrive with a whisper? A curse upon the fiery devil! Everything around is blackened. There are dark pools of water, muddy lanes, and miserable habitations far below. Oh. Who can deny the hot and pounding heart of our manufactories? Feel the pulse of invention and let the flow of trade run through this nation's veins. Ladies and gentlemen, we are truly standing in a revolution of industry. Oh. Away with the shriek and the roar! Today's dairy fresh from the farms and good meat on our tables. Louder and louder yet it shrieks and cries as humans tearing on resistance. And the vision of a wondrous and industrious nation standing tall and proud and proud to the world. Calm yourself, ladies, calm yourself. 
Explain yourself, Miss Havisham. I have been cruelly treated in my life, Your Honour, and I live only but to save these young ladies from the same fate. I see it as a moral duty. It is men who are the deceivers of this world, men in their cheating ways! My, my, my strong words indeed, Miss Havisham. Uh, well, ladies, what exactly have you learnt about men? Is that so? There must be good men of Medway. Do we not think so, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Maybe not. Well, it seems you are too harsh, Miss Havisham, and you've been corrupting these ladies' minds. Your Honour, if I may speak, if and, I may speak. And you are? I am a Miss Brandley of Richmond, and Miss Havisham is a dear friend of mine. And you wish to speak on her defence? I do, Your Honour. Proceed. Am, Your Honour, thank you. I appeal to the good people of Rochester. You see before you a woman who has suffered a terrible fate. Imagine it is the happiest day of your life. It is your wedding day and you are overjoyed. Picture yourself standing there, awaiting your beloved, the man of your dreams. You wait and you wait with a beating heart of excitement, but, and I can hardly bring myself to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, your love is never going to arrive. You have been rejected at the very altar. <gasps> rejected by a man who turns out to not love you at all, but who has been colluding with your own brother to steal your fortunes. He is the founder, the cad, Mr. Compison. <laughs> See to it, the lady, Mr. Bumble. I'm trying, Your Honour. <laughs> oh, this dear lady, Your Honour, if she has committed any crime, it is a crime of passion. For you see, she had great expectations. Oh. Is that not so, ladies? Yes. It's true, Your Honour. She doesn't mean to be cruel. She just can't help it. Uh, uh. <laughs> we don't really think all men are cruel, Your Honour. We just don't want to hurt her feelings. Please let her go. We promise to be kind and not be divas. Please. Well. A crime of passion, you say? Indeed, Your Honour. Step forward, Miss Havisham, if you will. Ladies and gentlemen of Medway, I can only ask that you give this woman a fair trial. Well, she will listen to all the evidence. If you think that Miss Havisham has, has suffered enough and should be free to go, then say aye. Aye! If you think that she is too much of a, a, a heartbreaker and a hard-hearted and should be kept from the streets of Rochester, then say nay! Nay! It seems you are to be banished from Rochester, Miss Havisham. And may I suggest that you don't judge all men the same, lest you become more bitter and twisted than you already are. And by the whiff of you, a new dress and a washer in order. Well, really, men! Oh, well, take her away, officer! Oh, come, come, my dear. forth the next defendant! Bringing forward Toby Crackett, Tom Jitlin, Noah Claypole, <coughs> and Jack Dawkins. Oh, and, and, oh, Lady Beth, haven't seen you around for a while. Are you alright? I object, Your Honour, this officer is getting too familiar. Well, then stand further away, Bumble. <laughs> what are the accused accused of? They're accused of theft, Your Honour. Uh, members of a pickpocketing gang, led by the one they call Fagin. Oh, well, how do you plead? Well, that's difficult to say, Your Honour. You see, these boys have fallen on hard times. It is but a twist of fate. They have no one to look after them. They have stolen, but only stolen a few hankies. Show them, boys, show them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> well, um, well, hunkies or no, this is a serious offence, and we have the hulks, the prison ships, of course, moored off the River Medway, ready to take rogues and villains such as yourselves. Yes, the ship you really is takes boys as young as seven. So it is to be the hulks or transportation. Take them away, officer. Judge Fang, let us ask the jury in Medway. We haven't always been bad, we just need to eat. Right, I'm hungry now. Oh, come, 
come, Your Honor. <laughs>